So this is our huge multi-touch screen. It's the most high fidelity multi-touch sensor out there on the market. Most touch sensors can only do this, but what we can do is literally an arbitrary number of points, an infinite number of points. Every pixel here is actually a touch sensor as well. And it can also respond to pressure, which means you can use any passive, so this is just a pen, you know, any passive stylus. It doesn't rely on any electro optical qualities of your finger. And what that means is that is what we can start using something like a map. And with one point, you can of course do this, but with two or three fingers, you know, we start swimming like that. No, no, no. We know that mapping is a really uh, interesting domain for us, so you know, let's go over to where you guys are right now. Ready? <laughs> Okay. We can add a sub lens here that accesses a different data set at the same time. Oh, there is no G yeah. uh, You can integrate multiple data sets together like this. Uh, we can uh, even uh, there's no there's no terrain around there. Out there is there? It's uh, I need to use low low low. No no no. I was just talking about the fact that Europe doesn't really over in London doesn't have much. I'm in Africa. Uh, we can do similar Whoa, things with uh, microscopy data. Very similar, very high res imagery that we can zoom in on really quickly. Oh, oh, oh. Accelerometer chips. Uh, incredible this and uh, adjust, do some image processing there. And treat this. We can even add a relative zoom so it becomes like a magnifying loop to the layer below it. Yeah, that's so, and for people um, like us who you know, probably work in the kind of exhibition industry, how can we um, work with you and the software that you have to create right. bespoke? So what it, it turns out that the, the, the hardware sensor is just merely, merely the first step. We yeah. have extremely high quality uh, sensing that allows us to do these kind of rich applications. Yeah. It turns out to be very difficult to develop multi-touch apps. It's very different from some yeah. UI, oh. standard UI development. Your usual flash designer, I think, really, it's really, it's akin to single-threaded versus multi-threaded programming, and it's almost in almost a literal way. There's, yeah, and there's tons of threads going around. Uh, concurrency is what we're talking about when you talk about multi-touch. The fact that you know multiple points are doing several things, you can't cache state as often as you can yeah. usually do. You can't rely on sequential modalities, which are almost a fundamental part of a lot of this of UI today. Um, not to mention this multi-user aspect. You know, multi-touch inherently implies multi-user, especially if you can make something this large. So, you can always bring up a text field, virtual keyboard. All this is uh, built in. So, what we've been doing to address that is all the great work we've been doing. We've been encapsulating to a rich framework and middleware layer that allows you to not have to worry about the math on how do you do this or how do you manipulate a 3D object. We do all that kind of thing for you so that you can concentrate on doing your content. There's a lot of mathematics going on here to all this, but it's all set, and then you yeah, can just start yeah. putting in your content. So you've basically built a, a, the equivalent of Flash for this. In, in essence. Yeah, yeah, yeah a program so, yeah, to let us sort of. In play. essence, at a much higher level. There's yeah, a right. lot more deeper mathematics sure. going on. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a rich scene graph that we use. There's support for all sorts yeah, of multimedia types. This is be that Sorry, could you explain a bit more about the light that you just, the, the purple light? Classes that you are just throwing around the screen. Oh, these? Oh, that's yeah. just uh, a little. Yeah, it's eye candy. <laughs> we knew that we we're going to be a show here, so we just. Uh, right. Phil just made up this really neat little thing where you, it's retaining the stroke and then it's replaying in a little loop over okay. and over again. Right. So it's really neat. And with a nice brush, of course. You know? Yeah. Why do you sometimes use your finger and sometimes your pen? Because I like the choice of it. Sometimes I can. I want precision, and sometimes I want to just go like that. It's that's that's the cool part. I have a choice. I can, you know, I like holding this in my hand, but I tuck it away quite often in you know in my in my thumb here while I do this. So this is all. Um, sorry, back projection. Is that correct? Or yes, this is all rear projection. We love rear projection because it's really the only effective way to get large, large displays like this. Okay, and how is actually your the the, the pressure and the the touch? Detected? Is it through infrared cameras in the? No, there, not or? at all. It's uh, our own proprietary technology, which okay. is far more advanced than any other system that's out there. It doesn't try to look for your hands or sense your hands, because all those kind of approaches that use cameras, yeah. they're very brittle. They're very sensitive to understanding where is it really touching you, or am I hovering right above it? Right. It's very difficult for those systems to discriminate a very slight hover from true touch. And if you're making a direct manipulation metaphor, like if I'm if I'm if I'm suggesting to the user that this moves because I'm touching it and moving it, it better only happen when I'm actually getting that tactile response, when I'm feeling it. If you do it any time before, then it just it actually shatters it quite a bit. And those are these subtle things that don't come across in a spec sheet, but when you're playing with the device, you, it really becomes apparent and you can start doing more advanced operations that, you know, touch screens have existed before. How come they haven't done things like this before? Well, it's because they usually suck. 
and the fidelity <laughs> of these systems are terrible. So, so, so if we were, for example, <laughs> we wanted to sort of put this onto a different surface, onto a product surface, we would. I mean, it's it's reliant on what you're projecting against the Our, service that we there. Yeah, but we can we can work together to integrate okay. it into different environments. So, so if we there. wanted to explore sort of putting it on something that was a transparent surface that you could see through, and it was like yeah. a holographic we could, we could, film. Yeah, if you like that, that, I'm not a big fan of uh, you know semi-transparent or transparent displays. I'm not really sure. Okay. I, I, mean, I understand it has appeal since everybody's seen that movie. Yeah, but, sure. Uh, <laughs> that movie. That yeah, movie. Well, that, that that movie. Remain nameless here, you know. Don't mention the M I'll word. Just, uh, I'll just. Uh, <laughs> Here, like, here's, here's some other things we can do. It's like a modern day Macbeth, isn't it? <laughs> so I can do Control F, and right now if I do Control F, it'll go online to Flickr, so I can bring this in front, and let's increase the resolution a bit, and then what I can do is clip this guy up. So you've totally developed the proprietary software in conjunction with the screen itself. Exactly. Yeah. So there we go. I can over this, over there, and then I can just manipulate this guy and go like that. Because it is as goofy as it looks. Wow, that's great. We like to deal with heavy data types, video, audio, basically toss them around if they're very simple objects. Now, we show this because once you have all these assets up on the screen, it becomes a big mess, right? So you need to start having organizational tools like this, like together and create a cluster, shrink it down, put it off like that, you know? No, just add so there seems, to here, be, right? there seems to be no limit to the amount of layers of different things that are going exactly. on here. Is there, exactly. is, there, is there a processing limit? Does it get to a point where you start to shut down? And well, of course. We're, we're running on standard commodity class machines. It actually is not at all. It's a normal core 2 duo, dual, dual core. Right. Um, we pride ourselves on good engineering to make sure we fully exploit that. It's not just really lossy. You know, right. we're, not using, we're not doing Ajax inside of our browser and getting you know, terrible yeah. performance. We're not using Flash. We're using you know, real native hardware accelerated stuff. Uh, I'm not saying you can put in a billion objects, it's, you know, obviously you start reaching a load limit, yeah. but uh, our, our framework is definitely very optimized. So this is amazing, thank you very is, much. This you know, what time. you do and you can just kind of, and it just keeps doing that motion. It's incredible stuff.